All right, here's the official story from the Daily Mail. Biggest fail in campaign launches in history. Ron DeSantis is mocked for shambolic Twitter room presidential announcement with Elon Musk that crashes five times and leaves users bamboozled. <laughs> yeah, it was around six o'clock. A few minutes before six, I get that notification because Elon is about to start this Twitter space. We're really excited to hear this. I was really excited to hear it. <laughs> and it started late and then wasn't working. And a lot of people, uh, man, I, I got to tell you, I like Elon Musk. He does great work. I like Ron DeSantis. He does great work. But I am not going to pull punches on this one. The obvious mistakes they were making, they did not properly plan for this. I have no idea how it came off so bad. For one, I understand if there's more people than you expect, but this is a presidential announcement. Getting hundreds of thousands of people was obvious. When we had we had Steven Crowder on this show, we had about 200,000 viewers. Yeah. Okay, now if you're going to have Ron DeSantis and Elon Musk, you got to prepare for that. I, I presume they did to the best of their abilities, but Twitter wasn't able to handle it. But here's the thing. A lot of people were saying, oh, you know, the servers were overloading. I, was, I, I, I understand that happens. No, 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 no. Look, some of the problem was like the main host guy was like, mute, he muted himself randomly. And I don't think he noticed. He was talking the mid-sentence, just mute. <laughs> and then Elon unmuted himself while the other guy was talking. So you got an echo because they were sitting next to each other. I'm like, dude, those are production mistakes, not technical errors. And if this was done on YouTube, it probably would have had substantially more live viewers. I think I think this was going for a, a, a big bang gimmick. We'll do this on Twitter spaces with Elon. It's huge for us, but they weren't ready for it. And it really pulled a lot of the wind out of their sails. Now, there's a lot of things we can talk about in terms of Ron DeSantis, Ron DeSantis as a candidate. But, uh, you know, what do you guys think? Yeah, no, I agree with you. These are technical problems that should have been sorted out long ahead of time. Uh, it's kind of perplexing whenever you see a massive campaign that's well funded and has a, a, you know, a lot of backing behind it fail at something so basic. I mean, it happens to the best of us. Everybody makes mistakes, but it's just such a lost opportunity. I heard that uh, it was because some because they were using musk's account and because he has so many followers that caused an issue i don't know how true that is that's just something i read um so i don't know if it's but i don't I, I mean it's, it was boomer it stuff matter. right it shouldn't matter i mean if again if they just did it on youtube they'd had a million plus viewers and it would totally. run fine yeah mm. totally i mean or rumble this mm. was almost klobuchar blizzard <laughs> like level right like that like let's, let's let's be real klobuchar blizzard level it was near near that but yeah, they should have been prepared. There's no question about it. Now they're getting roasted. It was. It is funny though that uh, at first the media was like, "Oh, it's stupid. It's going to fizzle." Then it got so much attention that it crashed. <laughs> it's a lot of people, yeah. man. Don't get yeah. me wrong. It. I think that it. It was a. Good, it would have been a a good thing had it gone properly. Um, I think that the fact that it was that DeSantis has totally been ignoring the legacy media. Um, I think that's a good thing. Right. Um, I also think that it's good because it kind of puts the legacy media on notice. Obviously, when you've got you know um, organizations like Vanity Fair running that that headline they did where they say that they they should have been Dave brought David Duke or whatever. Oh, I was dying. You know, it's ridiculous, yeah. of course. Um, and the the overall tone from the establishment media, the the legacy media, is you know ridiculous. So so. For conservatives to go to them and even even present an opportunity for them to cover is, is almost silly because you know they're going to say, oh, well, you're just a racist Nazi, huh? Mm -hmm. when, uh, so there's no reason to talk to them. When the Twitter space got to around 460,000 people, it was crashing. It was, it was crashing well before that. Yeah. But I got in right when it started, and then rapidly it rises. I tweeted out, looks like 460K might be the limit. This uh, Twitter user, Lofty Pixels, responded, YouTube had 750,000 live viewers for PlayStation Showcase today, LOL, and posted <laughs> this video from PlayStation that had no problem with this. Let me show you some of the reactions we got. We've got uh, Donald Trump Jr. saying, hashtag disaster. Yikes, man. Yeah, that's Just a, given that's ammunition. A yep. That's a hashtag. That's, that's better than desanctimonious. Yeah. Yeah. Disaster. Way better. Seriously, yeah. way better. That's Trump Jr. And then I think I got one more. Here we go. David Wolf tweets, failure to launch crashed Ron DeSantis 2024 and uh, sad faces from Ron and Elon. It looks kind of like CGI. You know? Yeah, I, it looks a little AI, right? Well, well I mean, they're, they're taking, you know, they're not just taking a swing at DeSantis. They're taking a swing at, at Musk because of the Twitter thing and the whole rocket cry, crashing, you know, making the, the 
linked to SpaceX and stuff, you know. Well, you brought up something interesting. I think it might have screwed up everything if it was Elon's account that screwed everything up mm-hmm. and it switched over to David Sachs. That's what like, I heard. It, it, it was changed it was, the whole vibe of the whole thing where it wasn't like Elon asking DeSantis questions. It just like it became like David the, Sachs. No, 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 I, the, I, the, I got in the middle of it. When it when it first launched, Elon was the host. Then DeSantis jo- uh, then I think Sachs joined. Yeah. And they both had speaking privileges. And one of the technical problems was that while Sachs was speaking, Elon unmuted his phone and they're sitting next to each other. So you start hearing a feedback uh, loop. And then I'm, that's I'm the just like, stuff. that's, and, but wow. for Elon to do that, like, why did you unmute your account? What are you doing mm-hmm. here, man? Well, then it became David Sachs asking all the questions. And I no, think but it, it was, was supposed to be. And it wasn't supposed to be. Right? No, it was supposed to be. Oh, it was supposed to be. I mean, look, they, 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 they might say, oh, it was supposed to be Elon. I don't, I don't see that. Why bring in Sachs at all? He, yeah. he was brought in before DeSantis. Yeah. So isn't he like, what is he like a British journalist or something? No, I mean he he was he was like CEO of PayPal, I think. Oh, okay, okay. So they're they're butts, but they, but I mean the whole thing was sold is like Elon asking the questions, right? Like even like we were going to the war room, Elon hosting a space with a special. Yeah, it was the it was supposed to be like the Elon interview type thing, and it didn't really happen. Yeah, it 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 didn't really happen. Just like softball city, and then after the crash, it just uh, was was it was just not good. I mean, it's just it's like I mean a lot of people left. That took a lot of wind out of the sails. I mentioned it yesterday, dude. Yesterday, we wanted to lead the show off with the uh, the Target story yep. because now it's getting crazier. Target is uh, apparently the CEO issued a statement saying, yeah, we're going to get rid of a bunch of stuff, but we're going to double down. Hmm. Basically saying we're going to try and hide this from the general public. Ugh. But instead, I'm like, okay, they basically released this launch video, so we have to cover it. But then what is there to cover today if, we, if not just the same thing we already know? Okay, dude's running for president. Then, of course, we got lucky in that they failed. So... <laughs> Like they, they, I, I shouldn't, so I should, it's a little mean, it's a little mean. They, they did do the space. They did get the message out. They did get the announcement. But I, I do feel like uh, uh, we got news out of the fact that they kind of screwed up the launch and they lost the majority of the audience that was ready for this announcement. But it was like a snooze fest. Yeah, it was, it was a snooze fest. I mean, it's like you, you really got bad. in there and you're like, wow, there's nothing interesting here. You got to come with some. Well, I mean, think no about bangers. it. Like, no, no bangers. I, I left relatively quickly. The new, yeah. the only news that was there was was it being done on a space. Everyone knew yeah. that DeSantis was going to run. DeSantis didn't yep. have anything. There was no pizzazz to his actual speech or anything. Yeah, so like, really, come, the, come with something. So it's like, like it really was the interesting thing was the fact that it was on Twitter for the first time and then they, it went bad. They ruined it. Could you imagine if Elon abruptly launched a space and then said, Ron DeSantis is making a big announcement? They, it, that would have crashed all of Twitter way faster yeah. than this would have. Mm, so maybe, totally. that's, maybe they're trying to avoid that. But even in that regard, DeSantis really screwed this one up, his, camp, his campaign, because they could have gone on Rumble and they could have done it with Dan Bongino and mm. that would have, would have held up just fine. But he was like, ooh, Elon Musk, he's big. We're going to go for this. If he abruptly appeared on a live stream with Dan Bongino, and Dan was like, I'm being joined by Ron. I don't know if Dan would, would want to do that because he's more of a Trump guy anyway. Right. But yeah. if Ron did a show, any any live stream, and they tweeted out, Ron DeSantis is here and he's about to make an announcement, you'd get 2 million live viewers. Instead, they were like, let's announce it, announce exactly what we're going to announce, and then have it crash. And it's just like, they end up with 190,000 or some odd people listening when Ron DeSantis makes his presidential announcement. And I was just like, totally. it's, it's good, but... For a presidential announcement? Come on, dude. We had Steven yeah. Crowder in here in January, and we cracked that number. And he didn't even announce he was running for president, right? Yeah, like, no, he was just complaining. <laughs> he, was just, he was just complaining was about internet upset. drama. Exactly. It was internet drama. Yeah. PlayStation, like I mentioned, did a showcase of video games at 757,000 people. That's brutal, man. Yeah, yep. they, he should have maybe saved this Elon moment for something that was, like, really newsworthy. You know, like mm. a big deal. Like yeah. something like, like the Steven Crowder moment, right? Like where everybody's paying attention and they're, they're hanging on every word. They could have saved this for something big at the right moment to drop during the campaign, I feel like. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know if this was yeah. the moment. I don't well, know if this I, was like everybody knew it was coming. It's I, like, it's a, it's, and it's they, a, they it's brought a, nothing to the table. It's a bad start. Yeah, I mean, do you think it was just an effort to associate himself with Elon because Elon is not necessarily on the right or left, but the radical left really hates him and the establishment is trying to fight him or vice versa? I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I think what's interesting out of this is Trump versus Elon. I think that's a more interesting mm. dynamic. I think this is going to be like, I think mm. Trump's going to attack Elon more than he's going to attack anybody else I, over I the course of the next Elon? week. Elon? Why, why see, Elon? Interesting. Oh, they, they, I mean, they, he attacks Elon all the time. I don't see how that's, I mean, that's, that's good in any way. For like, him? I, yeah, I, 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 don't, I, I don't think so either. I just think it's interesting. 
Hmm. It's gonna be interesting to see him attack Elon coming out of this thing as like, I mean, he's like, you know who he reminds me of a little bit? I don't know if you guys know Sheriff Joe Arpaio. Yeah. Mm-mm. Sheriff Joe and Phoenix, where yeah. I'm from, remembers every single person that wronged him ever. <laughs> And puts them on a list and attacks that. No, 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 no. <laughs> Daylights Trump, out. Trump of doesn't do that. Trump is <laughs> Trump attacks you only until you're nice to him. Yeah. As soon as you're nice to him, then he's buddies with you. Trump is is oh, is as we'll deep lion as a Ted like, to yeah. lion Ted. Yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> we'll, see, we'll right. see if Elon. You can be pro Trump and still be honest. The guy is like the guy has no principle. His he's, principle is winning. He's you know? saying tiny Ron DeSantis. Yeah. After the primary, he's gonna say Titan Ron DeSantis. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, Titan exactly. Ron DeSantis. He's a big man. He's a big man. You know, we he's all love him. He's a big supporter. He's a big. <laughs> you know. I always. You know, we had the thing in the primary, but came around 100%. yeah well and this is the thing this, this is one of the things trump really uh, understands about politics very well you know so many people in media will lampoon him for that kind of behavior the fact that he'll just do a complete 180 on a person and i agree there's something there that's laughable but the media does that constantly they're equally shameless yeah. Yeah. did, did, they, did they, you see uh, right. bill crystal i think called trump an alpha today yeah. or yesterday it's it's so called typical an alpha. <laughs> and what they'll also do is you know they will forward a narrative, that narrative will be completely disproven, and then they'll just jump to something else, or sometimes they'll jump to a different narrative, which is completely contradictory to what they were stating their goals are when representing the other narrative. So the media will take advantage of the American people having this short attention span and not considering how current statements line up against past statements, and then they'll laugh at Trump for doing the exact same thing. Let's uh let's let's do it. We're gonna play the announcement for you. It's a, it's a I guess it's seven minutes long. And uh, before I start, I just want to mention we have a super chat from uh, where, where 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 are we at? Who who said it? Um, Beagle Cakes says, "Who has I don't know who has more charisma, Mark Zuckerberg or Ron DeSantis?" <laughs> so I mean it's a little biased start, but let's just play the play the video for you, Zuckerberg, because you can you. roll jujitsu. Yeah. <laughs> um, I understand that you may have an announcement to make. Uh, we've got, I think, a, a record audience assembled here. Uh, you know, the, probably the biggest uh, room that's probably ever been assembled online. Uh, what, what would you like? That was such a sad statement. Yeah. There's 102 There's 100. people listening. 102,000. And he said probably the biggest online. Do you say, what do you say, ever? Assembled here. Uh, you know, the, probably the biggest uh room that's probably ever been assembled online I, <laughs> what would you like to tell them well i am running for president of the united states to lead our great american comeback look we know our country's going in the wrong direction we see it with our eyes and we feel it in our bones our southern borders collapse drugs are pouring into the country our cities are being hollowed out by spiking crime the federal government's making it harder for the average family to make ends meet and to attain and maintain a middle class lifestyle. And our president, well, he lacks vigor, flounders in the face of our nation's challenges, and he takes his cues from the woke mob. I don't think it has to be this way. American decline is not inevitable. It is a choice. Mm. And we should choose a new direction, a path that will lead to American revitalization. We must restore sanity to our nation. This means embracing fiscal and economic sanity. Stop pricing hardworking Americans out of a good standard of living through inflationary borrow print and spending policies. And please embrace American energy independence. This also means replacing the woke mind virus with reality, facts and enduring principles. Merit must trump identity politics. We must return normalcy to our communities. America is a sovereign country. Our borders must be respected. We cannot have foreigners pouring into our country illegally by the millions. We cannot allow drug cartels to poison our population with fentanyl. Public deserves safe communities and law and order must be maintained in American cities. We can't have inmates running the asylum and we must reject attacks on the men and women of law enforcement. We also must reestablish integrity in our institutions. This includes the military. I'm proud to be a Navy veteran, an Iraq veteran, and I revere our services. But when revered institutions like those in our military are more concerned with matters not central to the mission, whether it's global warming or gender ideology and pronouns, morale declines and recruiting suffers. And okay. You need to eliminate these distractions and we need to get focused on the core mission. We also cannot have true constitutional government if the most significant issues 
are decided by the whims of unelected bureaucrats rather than the people's elected representatives. Reestablishing integrity in our institutions means we must reinvigorate our constitutional system by returning the government to its rightful owners, we the people. Oh, no man. social <laughs> that was just come on still going. without representation. Truth oh. needs to be our foundation. Oh my gosh, it's only been no two minutes and 50 <laughs> seconds. And, yeah, it... and in Florida, we proved oh. it to be done. Uh, we chose facts over fear, Ron education over facts. indoctrination, Dude. law and order over rioting and disorder. We The words are great. When freedom, right? The words are great. The, the delivery. And but it's like an AI result, saying it. Florida's exactly. It's like tech. It's not even like an AI. It's like a text to speech, like Microsoft Sam. To be fair, AI probably would have had more information. Yeah. Recently ranked number one in education. We have a 50 year low crime rate and one of the lowest tax and debt per capita in America. But we also understand governing is not entertainment. It's I, I not about building out, a brand or virue signaling. He needed it wrong is about that. delivering That's just wrong. results. A lead in. And our results in Florida have been second to none. We can and we must deliver big results for America. I pledge to be an energetic executive that will take <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that woke me up. Biden's that was great. inflationary <laughs> policies that are hurting working people. We will reverse those policies <laughs> and we'll build an economy where working Americans can achieve a good standard of living. Biden's opened the southern border and allowed massive amounts of drugs to pour into the country. We'll shut down the border, construct the border wall, and hold the drug cartels oh, we're building accountable. Walls. Biden's embrace medical authoritarianism, such as unconstitutional COVID vax mandates. We will ensure that those violations of liberty can never happen again. Biden's allowed woke ideology to drive his agenda. Oh we will goodness. never oh. surrender to the woke mob, and we will leave woke ideology in the dustbin of history. Come on. Biden's also politicized the How military and caused been, recruiting Tim? to plummet. We will eliminate Halfway. ideological agendas from our military. Focus oh. the military on the core mission, and we will reverse the I, poor recruiting trends. Finally, Biden's weaponized the power of the administrative state this is a cruel to advance and unusual his punishment. left-wing agenda. We will reconstitutionalize the executive branch, and we'll bring the administrative state to heel. Now, you can't do any of that if you don't win. There is no substitute for victory. We must end the culture of losing that has infected the Republican Party in recent years. The tired dogmas of the past are inadequate for a vibrant future. We must look forward, not backwards. We need the courage to lead, and we must have the strength to win. And to voters who are participating in this primary process, my pledge to you is this. If you nominate me, you can set your clock to January 20th, 2025 at high noon, because on the west side of the U.S. Capitol, I will be taking the oath of office as the 47th president of the United States. No excuses. I will get the job done. Now, these past few years have given me a new appreciation for the fragility of our freedoms. I never thought I would see things in America that we saw during the COVID-19 pandemic. But our founding fathers were keenly aware of the fragility of freedom. When they framed our Constitution, they came to arm with having studied the history of every republic and the history of mankind. And they noticed that all of those experiments only had one thing in common, and it was this. Every single one of them had failed. And so they knew it fell to our country, the United States of America, to determine whether people could really govern themselves. Could we have a society based on the idea that our rights are God-given, not government-granted, and that society functions based on the rule of law, not the rule of individual men? And when Dr. Benjamin Franklin walked out of that convention, he was asked, did you deliver a republic or a monarchy? He said, a republic, if you can keep it. They knew freedom didn't run on autopilot. <laughs> I like the emphasis on you. Yeah. The only thing he emphasized. would have a responsibility to safeguard freedom, and it's our responsibility to do so at this important juncture in our nation's history. We have a lot of work to do to ensure the country gets back on track. I ask everybody listening to please join me on this mission. Please invest in our campaign by going to rondesantis.com and making a donation. Thank you. God bless, and I look forward to the discussion. Oh, man. oh I don't know I, what he I, does. Look, I really look, I want to turn it off, but it's like a presidential announcement. So I thought, like, for the sake of hearing it, people need to be able to hear it. Mm -hmm. But, dude, yeah. I, I, I couldn't believe it when he got to the part about a republic, if you can keep it. I'm like, listen, man, I like Ron DeSantis as a politician. He has great policies. He's doing a great job. But 
Holy crap, did they not give this guy one minute of media training? Did they not None. have any kind of, of campaign coach be like, go watch Captain America one time and just watch watch any Hollywood movie where the protagonist gives a speech about saving the world. Mm -hmm. just, just that. In fact, watch SNL as they mock that. Look, man, the Santa's people are probably going to get mad because they like him, but I'm not pulling punches. I like Elon. I like DeSantis, but that had negative charisma. Negative. Yeah, I, I agree. I look, I, I like DeSantis a lot. I think everything he was saying there was spot on. Every single word. I, but I'll be honest, I was I was literally bored to tears. I mean, it's remarkable <laughs> to me that someone who said so many things that were so true that would have gotten a, a standing ovation from any group of conservatives who are outside of the establishment where they just delivered with a little bit more energy could be so boring when addressed in such a, a plain, monotone way. Yeah. I think that you're right. He needs media training. Again, I'm not trying to be harsh on the guy. There's a, there's a lot about DeSantis, which is really, really great. He has to fix this. He I, has to fix guys, this. Guys, I really don't want to play this video for you. Because it's just, I don't think Ron DeSantis has the, has the personality for, for being president. But for the sake of just letting you guys watch it for yourselves, this is Ron DeSantis's tweeted out official announcement video. Our border is a disaster. Crime infests our cities. The federal government makes it harder for families to make ends meet, and the president flounders. But decline is a choice. Success is attainable, and freedom is worth fighting for. Riding the ship requires restoring sanity to our society, normalcy to our communities, and integrity to our institutions. Truth must be our foundation, and common sense can no longer be an uncommon virtue. In Florida, we prove that it can be done. The music's bad. We chose facts over fear, education over indoctrination, law and order over rioting and disorder. We held the line when freedom hung in the balance. We showed that we can and must revitalize America. We need the courage to lead and the strength to win. I'm Ron DeSantis, and I'm running for president to lead our great American comeback. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something shockingly offensive to all DeSantis' fans. Oh, boy. Joe Biden's got better presence and presentation than Ron DeSantis does. Now, now hold on there a minute before you freak out. Joe Biden does have a mental affliction, <laughs> yeah, which gives Joe Biden the major. Makes it life. entertaining. Yeah, it makes when, it entertaining. When, when Biden says bad calf care, tune out shop at a pressure. Okay, like we get it. That's incomprehensible mumbled garbage. But at the very least, let me let me let me play a little bit for you. Sanity to our society, normalcy to our communities, and integrity to our institutions. Truth must be our foundation. Now imagine how Joe Biden would deliver that. Yeah. We got to bring some, in, some, some integrity. Some integrity, man. Some truth. You got to bring emotions. Walk, Come on, man. I, walking the around, thing is, staring uh, off in the corner. I think I mentioned this before the show, but I think DeSantis needs to be able to announce that he's running for president with at least the same amount of energy that Joe Biden announced he had hairy legs with. Uh, right? Seriously. <laughs> I mean, we, we need some actual spirit behind these statements. Again. I got hairy legs. I, I got hairy legs. Like, he meant it. He, I was like, I believe you. I believe you, Joe. <laughs> they're they're weird, very hairy. Super weird. You're very creepy, but I do believe your legs are hairy. Okay. You, there's some level of enthusiasm you need and part of the reason that this is so difficult for people is because DeSantis and Trump even though they're rivals they've been associated with each other right. in many ways right the, the establishment has smeared DeSantis in somewhat similar ways to the ways they smeared Trump uh, before they started running against each other their bases were similar but the thing you got to remember is Trump was an outsider. DeSantis is a politician, even though he's not in line with the establishment on many of the things that they want him to be in line with them on. Uh, he's still a politician, and he does kind. He, I mean, he has that boring political way of speaking. And I, I would go as far as to say it's actually worse for him than it is a lot of other uh, politicians. So part of it is we have this expectation sent by Trump that we should have a leader who's really going to be charismatic right. and energetic. And also the fact that DeSantis is like, even more boring than most other politicians are when he speaks, even though I like what the guy does, what? even though he's he's very much impressed me. I mean, one of, one of the things he said earlier on 
uh, quite a long time ago is that he didn't want to be in a political foxhole with anyone who isn't pro-life. I think that's fantastic. I mean, I think that is fantastic. There's a lot Here's, he does that's phenomenal. But man, you gotta you gotta tune the energy up, man. Well, well turn the energy up. So I have his quote. It's, he said, but we know our country is going in the wrong direction. We see it with our own eyes and we feel it in our bones. I am running for president of the United States to lead our great American comeback. If you were to imagine Joe Biden saying that, he'd say something like, but we know our country is going in the wrong direction. We see their own eyes. Come on, man. We feel it in our bones. I read that he'd probably say, we feel it in our b- bigums. Yeah, he would, he would say like, something I don't know wrong. what that word is, yeah. but... But there's like, I'm not trying to say that Joe Biden conveys ideas properly. No. But the emotions in those ideas. He's been doing a lot longer. He has a lot of big He's feelings. Good yeah, good old well, Joe. I'm just, I mean, running big events. I mean, we, we run some of the biggest events at Turning Point. And shout out, we have, uh, we just announced that Trump's going to be speaking at our big action conference uh, on July 15th and 16th at West Palm Beach, but uh, right before this. But doing this, I think what was the weird part about this whole announcement is you have to warm up the speaker. They should have treated this whole thing like it was he was going on stage. I mean, they had a video of him yeah. going on a big stage. It's him in front of a flag without cheering, all of the back. It, none of it felt like there was a big crowd there. So he, they're put, they're showing this video of him like solo in front of a flag. And they're on Twitter spaces. And he came in cold after a technical difficulty. Why did they have a whole program where it was like warm up speakers, get the crowd hyped, yeah. like add to the... Like that, the way, like they, they should have built the thing up to I, be hundreds of thousands of followers. I would and then, bet and jump. anything that that exact video would have been fine if they didn't use pensive staccato violins. Yes. If they'd have had better music that actually had some impact. I'm telling you, I am telling you. I think the visual of him uh, just like alone though. I like, guarantee that music was pensive. That that made people feel anxiety. It didn't feel <laughs> epic. Seriously, that kind he of that kind of picking. Absolutely. No, no, no. Look, look. Mm-hmm. I think the music is fine, but not with this presentation. I think the presentation could work if it had better music. You get this really intense boom, ring, ding, ding, and he's going. We've got to have truth in our nation. <laughs> well, it's like they, they do not go together. Let me let me point out this one piece here. You're not able to see him on this Twitter space, right? Which I think is so stupid. I mean, this isn't, you know, what is this? This isn't like the early 20th century. You can't see the guy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> this is basically like radio. He's basically an yeah. FDR. You know, he, could, he, 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 he couldn't walk. Maybe he couldn't walk. Maybe he, he, maybe he didn't have functioning legs. We wouldn't know with him. He's using this medium that nobody can see him with a video. They should have built this whole thing where it was like his whole production. They've had months and months and months and months to, where it's like he's in a room with a lot of people. Why can't you why can't you do this whole thing in a room with a lot of people? Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean it's a good point. I think you were absolutely spot on when you said there should have been an audience there. He should have been on stage. There should have been people cheering for him, a warm-up act. Yeah. I'm actually I'm actually but this this is sort of what I'm saying, right? It's it's remarkable to me when something with so much money and power behind it is done so poorly. I mean, these are really basic things. You don't have to be an expert political analyst to know that those things would have helped him. And not just that they would have helped him, but that they're kind of bare necessities. I just, I would have thought they would have at least had some kind of general media training. And, and what gets me is that was their finished product. Mm-hmm. That was them saying, we, we, we got it. Did we get it? We got it. We're good. We're good. Ron, that was actually. High five. Yeah. yeah. Like when, when, when we watch these Biden yeah. videos and they're jump cutting like crazy, because you know, the dude is completely incomp- yeah. incapable yeah. of speaking at this point. You watch that. And I'm just thinking to myself, it's the best thing they wrapped. Yeah. They went to the edit and said, guys, this is it. They could have called him back in and said, hey, Ron, we really need to have a coach here who's going to tell you how to say these lines. So, like, for instance, when I'm doing, uh, Seamus will ask me to read some lines for Freedom Mm -hmm. Tunes. He's got a beer to tell me how to do the lines because it might say something like, oh, boy, I'm going to go buy an ice cream cone. And then I say, oh, boy, I'm going to buy an ice cream cone. And then Seamus will be like, no, say, oh, boy. I'm going to go buy an ice cream cone. Like, you got to say it's yeah. short here. Like, you yeah. need direction. When, he, yeah. he didn't have it. When we're, like, when I'm, when I'm recording, like, we're doing a record or whatever, there's three things that the, the producer's going to tell me. He's going to tell me either my timing's bad, he's going to tell me my notes are bad, or he's going to tell me I don't believe it. You got to yeah. believe it. Gotta you be. have to be performing. If you're up there and you're talking to a crowd, you need the crowd to believe what you're saying. They, they need to believe that you believe it. That's the first thing. And this, you have to believe it. You have to pr- tell them that 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 you believe it. And this, this is why Trump 
basically <laughs> always crushes, right? Because he always, yes. always sells that he yep. believes it. This is why he can get away with going on television and saying something completely different than he said a few days ago about a particular person. Because he when believes he says it, both it times. he believes it. Exactly. Well, exactly. He, He's I'll, really he, in it. People likely he shows up and just starts talking. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. There's a weird element to that that people like. They've liked since day one. And that's what lit a fire under people to be like, oh, you know what? I don't like Ted Cruz anymore. I like Donald Trump. That's yep. what happened in 16. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at Timcast.com for uncensored members only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out and we'll see you all next time.